So Britt, can you tell us who is your favorite non-science teacher in college or before? Um, I think that uh, maybe it has something to do with age, mm -hmm. because you remember your elementary school teachers really well. But um, one of the most inspirational teachers that I had was Al Lingle, okay. my sixth grade teacher, Louise Archer. Um, elementary school, uh, which is outside of D.C. in Northern Virginia. Spectacular. Okay. He, uh, he, we did a lot of creative writing. We did, uh, well, we did a lot of learning by doing. Right. Uh, so I was convinced I was going to be a writer right. coming out of sixth grade. Um, when I was littler, I wanted to be a lawyer for trees because my dad was a forester. Mm -hmm. So we lived out in rural Virginia near some national forests that he managed. And uh, I wanted, I thought the trees needed a lawyer to stop people from cutting right, them down. Right, right. So uh, I went from that uh, to wanting to be a writer, and uh, my undergraduate degree is actually in British literature. So he did have an impact on right. me. Um, but I think the emphasis on teaching by doing, if you, if you want to learn about science, you need to do science, not just look at what other people did and learned with science. Um, I think part of that came from him. Oh. So he was, he was a really important teacher to me. Well, thank you. Um, if you if yeah, thank you, Alan. <laughs> thank you. See, well, I think that's why we're developing the technology in that way. I think mm -hmm. we're playing to our strengths. Right. And, but I think we also like to be out doing things. Okay. We're doers. Yes. And it's yes. it's our culture. We, you know, we, we've moved really far away from the sit in little desks and all get the same answers. Mm -hmm. and, and the world isn't like that anymore. We don't all work in factories anymore. Right. So it seems to me it's really important to teach people well, to remind people what they already know, right. which is how to figure things out. Right. Just think on your feet, learn new things, be excited about it. It's just, it's a lot more energizing. And I think particularly the generation that's being educated now, um, it, it's not gonna work to strap them into their little desks and make them take standardized tests. Right. This is not, it's not right. looking like a recipe for success. Right. So. Well, of um, grid funding research. Do you mm. think that is uh, sufficient to help me out? We'll talk to my Well, it's, it's critical. It, it is actually critical. Only a tiny percentage of our total national budget goes to the National Science Foundation, which is what funds uh, my research and a lot of other people. There are a lot of small private grants, that, that which is actually where I get more money from, from small things. Uh, without that research, we can't, without money that's not tied to outcome, Mm -hmm. it, it seems counterintuitive saying that I want people to get out there and do things, right. but um, exploration has huge value. Just if you think about uh, nylon, for example, I, I don't know if this is true because I'm not a chemist, okay. but I heard that nylon was an accident, okay. that someone yeah. was trying to make something else and they made nylon. And if they'd only been allowed to get money, if they said, oh, I'm going to make a stretchy substance that can make women's hosiery, right. oh, okay, sure. You know, so the accidental discoveries move us forward as much as the intentional ones. Right. So grant money needs to go to the fight against cancer, the fight against AIDS, the, the, uh, our understanding of earthquakes and natural disasters, our ability to understand and predict climate. These are incredibly important things that are directed, but I think it's critical to keep some of this grant money for wacky ideas. Yes, yes. And, and a tiny portion actually needs to go maybe to the people that, that the general science community thinks that is never going to work. Well, you know, let somebody try it. Don't give them a million, but give someone $40,000, which is a huge sum of money, I know. Mm -hmm. But if they use that in two years and they really learn something new, exactly. then we've actually advanced our knowledge as a species. Right. So I'm, and some people, I think it's important. You have, you have some people saying, you know, well, your experience with my money, your gambling with my money, but like you said, that. And the day you're learning new processes <laughs> right. about the earthquakes and you're learning new stuff, how things work, how the environment works. So, yeah. and, and now let me ask you this, was the grant um, funding, was that here when you got here or was that something you hoped? Oh, no, it's, it, Wellesley has actually yeah. always been, and this is kind of unusual for a liberal arts college, it, it styles itself in a sense a research college. Most big money grant funded research takes place at universities but one yep. of the things about wellesley college that is actually really special and it makes it an exciting place to teach is that there is a significant emphasis on research right. so um when i came i was given a certain amount of money to get started 
from the college. Right. And then you write grants and you build on that to keep your program going. But they, they give you starter grants here. And that's... That's good. It's, that, it's that really helps. nice. And it's, it's great because here we don't have the graduate students and the postdoctoral fellows that do a whole lot of the work of just keeping a big lab running. So it's hard to have a huge big lab here. Mm -hmm. But if you can conceptualize your research in projects that can be finished on a, the, an undergraduate time scale, mm -hmm. which is maybe one year in your lab, or um, maybe two if you get them early enough, maybe three if you attract them as sophomores and they actually don't change their minds halfway through mm -hmm. because they're supposed to be exploring. They're undergraduates. Exactly. If they change their minds, that's good too. Yeah, that's fine. Right, you know, right. go go try to be an artist now. Right. Try something else. Right. So, you know, it's part of liberal arts education to explore. But um, if you can put your research on this scale and still make forward strides, right. it's, it's actually a really wonderful place to work.